Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 297. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Today is Wednesday, September 6th, 2023, and I've got some Halloween projects for you today. One is a little treat box that holds a Kit Kat, and the other is a fun fold. I love this with all these panels on the inside and just a, a white piece on the back to write a note. So many things you can do with that fun fold, obviously not just Halloween, but Christmas, birthday, you name it. I love a good fun fold card and a good 3D project as well. Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Brian is here watching for your questions and comments. If you do have a question for me tonight, be sure to put a cue before that question. That will allow me to find it in my cue when I do the Q&A uh, at the end of tonight's live stream. We'll do sort of rapid fire Q&A. That way I can focus on tonight's projects and then answer all of your questions at the end of the live stream. So always look forward to your questions because they're always wonderful. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. All I ask you to do is to use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code to your order. If your order is gonna be $150 or more, make sure you remove that host code from your order because you're gonna earn Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up. You'll also earn Pixie Perks from me as well. Couple of housekeeping things tonight. Today was a big day with Stampin' Up. It was catalog launch day. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. This is the Stampin' Up homepage. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things. You'll see sort of the rotating banner. Not only did the September to December 2023 mini catalog launch today, and you guys are loving it, um, there are some additional special releases. So I'm going to go ahead and go on the homepage here. I'm going to click on menu and then online exclusives. And I just wanted to point out these products that are popping up towards the top here are things that I want you to take notice of because you may not have known about them. So there were five designer series papers, part of a special release that dropped today. They are all available while supplies last. These were an originally intended if Stampin' Up! was gonna have a second celebration this year. They only did the one celebration, but you'll see them pop up here in on top of the online exclusives. And again, I just wanna point out, if you're having a hard time looking for online exclusives, just click the menu button and you'll look for this little bubble. Of course, you're not seeing my, uh, my uh, mouse here, but the second bubble from the left on the bottom row is for online exclusives. So we've got our five designer series papers. Some of them coordinate with products in the new mini catalog. Then we have a Christmas Everywhere kit. That was the new kits collection that dropped today. This glimmer paper is adhesive backed, which I think is incredible, especially for our holiday product projects. So we've got Traditions of St. Nick, Shining Christmas, Delightful Floral, which coordinates with translucent florals. I think the Traditions of St. Nick coordinates with, there's a St. Nick bundle in the mini catalog. Then the silver and gold adhesive backed glimmer paper and the tartan foil specialty designer series paper. Then you can see all the other online exclusives. These are products that you won't see printed in a catalog but absolutely available to add to an order. I also wanted to point out, yeah, remind me later on that. Okay, <laughs> under menu and then I'm going to go to shop products and whoops, go back. I'm gonna make sure you're seeing this because my screen just went funny on me. Here we go, okay. So branded merchandise, there were some mugs that dropped today that are so cute. It's a pair of holiday mugs, the Fa La La La, did I say that? Fa La La La, yes. Fa La 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 Holiday Mug Duo. I wanted to show you how cute the inside of the Christmas lights one. It has Inspire, Create, Share on the inside. I think these mugs are super cute. They are available to demonstrators and customers, but what a great way to give a teacher gift or a neighbor gift fill it with some treats like a hot chocolate spoon and other things like that. So just wanted to share that with you. Go ahead and check out those things. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that dropped. There is discounts available for demonstrators on supply items, but that's a demonstrator exclusive. So let's see, I have a mess in front of me. So today has been crazy, crazy busy because you guys are amazing and having so much fun ordering from the mini catalog. So my um, desktop is a hot mess, but I do have show and tell from the kids. So give me one moment. 
This is Lily's. She actually has show and tell for us this week. Cinema Roll, the best and the greatest. He is apparently running for office, apparently. Um, <laughs> some random voter says, it's time to vote. And another random voter. And if you do vote, Cinema Roll. <laughs> She said, she explained down here in the corner, this is our fifth grader, um, for more like this, go to, and she goes, I couldn't think of a web address, so I blacked it out like it was personal information. I love this girl's creativity. So that is from Lily. There you go, thank you. Oh, and Nolan is back to his big uh, platforms here, but he is not only Lego obsessed, but lately Stitch obsessed from Lilo and Stitch. So he's got these um, keychains or, I don't know, backpack doomahickeys. <laughs> um, and he's building a little house for his stitches. So he's um, gotten into Stitch and Lilo and Stitch and uh, Minions. So we've watched the kids were home from school this week. They go back to school tomorrow. Uh, they had a teacher work day yesterday and... Um, professional development day today so the kids have got a five-day weekend how nice is that um so they go back to school tomorrow yay all right so here are our projects tonight now these are inspired by swaps that i received and you have to give me a moment because i want to make sure i get the names correct so one second i know that this one is christine mcnichol from new zealand hold on probably not gonna find the other one mm -hmm. Okay, so this was the inspiration from Christine. So she had a, but she made it out of the Daisy um, designer, that whole suite. I love this. She heat embossed on vellum. And I love the little sentiment here. And it's sort of a fold and tuck treat holder. So that's the style of it. I've pixified the measurements to fit our US Kit Kats, but I love the way that this goes together so um, again i've resized it this is the version we're going to make tonight having fun with the tricks and treats bundle i think is the name of it. i'm still learning the names you guys but same thing i stamped here on sort of about an inch exposed of cardstock and then it's a fold and tuck and there's our us like it's too small size of Kit Kat. Um, but that just fits right here and you can create these ahead of time to store flat Again, this is specifically sized to fit a Kit Kat, but I know the question is going to come up. You can also put a gift card in here just to show you that that will fit in the pocket with the Kit Kat. So that could be a really cute teacher gift or a gift for somebody in your life, somebody special. Okay, so yeah, the Frankenstein was a lot of fun. I'll give you a couple tips or tricks, especially with these solid images, what I did to make sure that I got good ink coverage. And then let me look really quickly. I know I had that. Oh, here it is. And then the fun fold card, I want to give inspiration credit to Michelle Sturgeon. I believe she's from Canada, I think. Um, but here is her swap card that I received at Backstage, and it is stunning. Now, I don't know the name of this fun fold. It's almost like a quad panel. Um, it does stand up on its own, which I love, especially for the recipient to put that on display like so. And I just, you can do so many fun things with these panels um, with designer series paper. I opted to go simple, mostly because I was running out of time tonight, but um, this is more products from the Tricks and Treats bundle. This is from the Bag of Bones designer series paper. And these little um, herringbone patterns, those are actually bats. How cute is that? So again, we got those panels. I was going to do kind of some fun things with the Frankenstein and the vampire and the haunted house, but I ran out of time. But I love even just simple designer series paper patterns. I opted to back these panels with designer series paper and then I added a uh, basic white layer to the back to write a note. So if my brother's on, this may end up in the mail to my niece and nephew for Halloween. So that's what we're making tonight. We're gonna start with the 3D project. Let's go ahead and do that. So again, thanks to Christine McNichol and Michelle Sturgeon for the inspiration tonight. I do think I need to cut paper ahead of time because I think I cut it and then I don't know where it where it went. So hold on. Okay, so designer series paper, we want to have a piece that measures five and a half by seven. So I'm going to go ahead and cut 
Let's see. Is this already seven? This might already be seven. No, it's a little more than seven. So I'm gonna cut this piece to seven. And then five and a half. I've been up, well, I should say I got up at uh, 2.30 this morning, so my brain is running on empty, so bear with me tonight. Wanted to make sure to get in some orders this morning. All right, so uh, five and a half by seven, and then I'm gonna grab a piece of pumpkin pie. And this one we wanna cut to six and three quarters. So bringing out the arm here. I'll repeat the measurements once I get this cut. So six and three quarters to two and 11 sixteenths, which is just one sixteenth less than two and three quarters. So what I like to do is I'll go to the two and three quarter inch mark and then I'll just bring it back. Let me zoom in for you so you can see that. So here's the two and three quarter inch mark. I'm gonna bring it back to a sixteenth of an inch tick mark. So that's two and 11 sixteenths. All right, so let me repeat those measurements again. Five and a half, whoops, way too big, Julie. <laughs> way too zoomed in. Five and a half by seven. Six and three quarters by two and 11 sixteenths. Again, one sixteenth less than two and three quarters, okay? All right, now bringing in the Simply Scored here. On the Designer Series paper piece, along the five and a half inch side, we're gonna score this at one, one and three eighths from each side. So one and three eighths, one and three eighths. Then I'm gonna turn it to the long side and I'm gonna go ahead and score this at three and three quarters and four and one quarter. So I'll repeat those again on the six, or sorry, on the five and a half inch side, score it at one and three eighths from each side, turning it to the seven inch side, and we're gonna score that, did it this way, but three and three quarters and four and one quarter, okay? Then on this piece that is the six and three quarters by two and 11 sixteenths, along the six and three quarter inch side, same score measurements, three and three quarters and four and one quarter. And that's just real simple score lines. I will likely create a template for the project sheet for the designer series paper piece, but we don't have to do any uh, cutting for that. All right, so on the designer series paper piece, I'm going to fold and burnish on all the score lines. I love that these are bats on the herringbone pattern, so cute. Or they could be cats too, but I'm pretty sure they're bats with the wings. And there's another pattern that has like eyes on it. All right, so we've done that. And if I put this in portrait, we've got those two panels are going to fold to the inside. Those are the one and three eighths inch score lines. I'm going to fold those in and then where these vertical, sorry, where these horizontal score lines are, I want to take this score line and line it up to this folded edge to make a diagonal score line. So what I like to do, let me zoom in here. What I like to do is either take my fingernail or the tip of my bone folder and I'll put it right there where that score line meets the edge and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this score line to this folded edge. You just line that up. Let me come in and burnish and I'll show it to you close up in the camera. So again, score line, bringing it to that folded edge. And that basically gives us that 45 degree diagonal score line there. So I'm gonna repeat the same thing. We're gonna do it four times total all around these horizontal score lines. I've done quite a few style boxes like this before, so if you're not new around here, this will be really familiar to you. So again, focusing on that, that closest vertical, I keep saying vertical, horizontal score line to me. And then same thing here. Okay. 
All right, so then you kind of get that mouth. It looks like a mouth to me, but those, those diagonal score lines are there and in place, okay? I'm gonna zoom back out. All right, so then I'm gonna put this off to the side for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on those two score lines we did on the cardstock piece. And on the shorter section, we're gonna go ahead and round the corners. And I'm actually gonna use the very best trio punch, which I haven't used in a while, uh, but you can use any corner rounder you have. This one just gives a little bit of a different look to it. So I'm gonna take that corner and feed it into the punch. I do recommend kind of studying um, let's try to catch the light there. Studying how that punch looks, I want the rounded edge to be on this edge. So I'm gonna actually have it here on the left. I'm gonna punch, and then I'm gonna also flip my cardstock. So then that way I get that rounded edge. That just helps to have this tuck into the treat holder. And again, that was the very best trio punch. You get this little angled punch out and you get a ribbon slot as well. So it's a great trio punch to have. All right, so now on our designer series paper piece, you'll notice that there's one section that is larger than the other section. This is the section we're gonna actually put our cardstock into. And this will also make the back sturdy as well. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and put adhesive on the back of the cardstock. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just lay that right into this middle section. Just also making sure that those flaps will close down, but you're coming all the way up to the score line there and then the score line here. It should perfectly fit in there. And because we cut that to two and 11 sixteenths, that means that cardstock's not gonna get in the way of the score lines on either side of it. So that just gives it room to fit in there. All right. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is actually apply adhesive to our designer series paper now, but I'm gonna go from the diagonal score line up. So you see those diagonal score lines there. I don't wanna put any adhesive on that triangle section at all. So just kinda of go right along that diagonal and up. I'll do the same thing on both sides. Like so. And then I'm just gonna fold those flat and press those into place. So the back is done there, okay? Like so. Now it just occurred to me I didn't do my stamping first, so this could be fun. <laughs> Um, so essentially the way that this is going to go together, we don't put any adhesive on this side. We want to leave it open and the, this end that we did the punch, the corner punch on is just going to tuck right in there and it actually holds itself together like so. Perfect fit for a Kit Kat. So we're going to go ahead and stamp and I'm going to have to get a little bit creative because I did set up the stamp apparatus for the stamp, the stamping here. Hold on. All right, I just did this to make sure that uh, I could get a good stamped image, sometimes with the Tuxedo Memento, the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. It tends to pool up a little bit on the photopolymer, so I should have actually stamped this um, ahead of putting it in the designer series paper, but we're gonna adapt. I lined it up on my Stamparatus so that it was just the full piece of cardstock here. So let me do that. And this stamp actually comes from the Bag of Bones stamp set. The Bag of Bones stamp set is available right now. The Bag of Bones dies are out of stock until next week. So I wanna make sure that that's lining up right, yes. All right, so with your photopolymer, there's a couple things that you can do to sort of prime them so they're ready for stamping. Um, they have a tendency to, for ink to pool on them, especially if they're a solid, solid image, which I'll show you with the little Frankenstein stamp. For these, I literally just wiped them on my pants <laughs> before I put ink on them. And that just kind of, I don't know, it... Um, it doesn't really rough up the texture of the photopolymer, but I feel like it gets rid of some of that residue. Um, you do wanna make sure you clean them really well ahead of time. You could also use like a rubber eraser um, just to kind of, um, 
I don't know, you kind of roughen up the, the stamp set itself without damaging it, but it allows it to hold ink better. So um, I just found that that worked. But with the Stamparatus, this also will give me an opportunity to stamp a couple times if I don't get good ink coverage with this. I think we should be good. Also, um, a juicy ink pad is your friend as well. So go ahead and press that down. I realize I've got extra layers of paper here with the designer series paper. Oh, there we go. That looks good. Okay. So I would recommend stamping before you're putting the treat box together. But I love the way that this, the, the mechanism of this um, from Christine's inspiration because you get an opportunity to see a little bit of the cardstock and then a sentiment as well. So I'm going to grab a Kit Kat. And then we'll just pop that right in this little mouth. <laughs> it looks like a mouth to me. And then close this off. Like so. And you can kind of finagle the wrapper if you need to. So there we go. I'll show you the products we're using here in just a moment. All right, so now let's do a little bit of stamping. I'm actually going to grab, I'm gonna do a different piece of this and the stamp and pierce mat is really really helpful especially with these solid photopolymer all right so we're going to use granny apple green now i've done a couple iterations of this on this Frankenstein, I actually stamped off once. It actually gave his face a little bit of texture, but I actually preferred, and Brian voted on this one as well, the more solid um, first generation stamping with that one. Um, it'll take a little bit for the Granny Apple Green to kind of lighten up. It's gonna look really dark when we first stamp it. But again, you can kind of see, see the texture on that? That's literally for me rubbing on my pants. That sounds so crazy, but it really works to help the, I don't know if it's because you get some textile, I have no idea how it works, but it works. Give it a try. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I've got a nice solid coverage with ink and you'll see there's no ink pooling there. And then I'll go ahead and stamp down again using the stamp and pierce mat to give me that really solid image, like so. Now again, that looks really dark. It's gonna take some time as it dries, it'll get a little bit lighter and be that perfect Frankenstein green. And then for his hair and his scar and his bolts, is that what those are? Bolts on the side of his head? I'm gonna use the Tuxedo Memento. Man, Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I think I need to re-ink this, but. And then, because it's photopolymer, it should be easy to line up. Like that, that green's still showing up pretty dark, but he's so cute. All right. I'm probably gonna need you to hand me the stamp and cut emboss machine, which is on the floor by you. So we've got the dies from the Tricks and Treats bundle. Thank you. I'm gonna put this right here. And I'm gonna grab my post-it tape. And line this die up. It's gonna be a perfect cut. Oh, he's so cute. I also am gonna show you what the bag looks like from the dies once I show you the products up close. All right, stamp and cut and emboss machine. Get that magnet out of here before it causes trouble. Thing I need to die cut tonight. 
Oh, a ghost as well. <laughs> so cute. Again, that green's gonna get a little bit lighter. Um, Frankenstein always reminds me of our dear family friend, Uncle Tom, who had a robotic Frankenstein um, that he actually brought to our house for Halloween. We'd get around, I don't know, three to 400 trick-or-treaters. And it just was such a cool uh, Halloween memory. So anytime I see a Frankenstein, I think of my Uncle Tom. All right, so we got this guy. And then I'm gonna use the fun gingham ribbon. This is the quarter inch black and white gingham ribbon. And I'm gonna see if I can remember how I did this. <laughs> I could not find my glue dot, so I opened up another roll and I got lucky again. The glue dots are on the right side <laughs> of this one. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do another faux bow here. But I was questioning myself the way I did it before. Okay, there we go. I'm hearing um, the children <laughs> talking to each other. All right, give me a second to figure this out and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna trim that. And trim, so I kind of did two support ribbons is what I think of, to just kind of loop-de-loop -loop and crisscross over each other. Do you see that? So I'm not tying a knot. This is just gonna go behind our Frankenstein here, but I need to use some glue dots to kind of trick this ribbon to do what I want it to do. So, and I feel like that just went the wrong way. There we go. All right, so I'm going to, I'm gonna do this. I was trying to think of a really easy way to explain this to you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and put a glue dot right in the center of that bow. Let's see if I can do this on the fly. Right in the center. Just put that right there in the middle. And then I'm doing... So support ribbon. Let me zoom in so you can see this. Just kind of a fun way to get your ribbon and tails going the right way. So support ribbon on that side, and then we're gonna do support ribbon on this side. And I say support ribbon because it's just the way that you are turning your ribbon loops, like so. Okay, so then just use your mini glue dots to kind of help you fake your way to a faux bow. <laughs> loop de loo like so. And kind of move things around if you need to, but see how it's like two support ribbons? And then I'm just gonna flip that over and that's gonna go right on the front of our treat holder here. And again, I'm gonna trick this or um, hide a couple of mini glue dots. I like to do a pair because then that bow is gonna stay put. And we're just gonna put that kind of right in the center. But I'm gonna trim my tails again because they're a little long. There we go. And then I'm gonna take my Frankenstein to pop it right over top there. And I'm just gonna take two dimensionals. I'm just gonna put them on above the bow and below the bow. Like so. and then pop our Frank right over top of those, like that. And I thought he needed a little bit of bling, so we're gonna give him rhinestone eyes. He's kinda of looking off to the right here, so we'll follow suit with the way the image is stamped. Like that. And the fun part about this project is you can pick any of the characters in the bundle. Let me come in, let me show you that bundle in closer detail. So here's the sample. And I realized I did a totally different designer series paper. <laughs> the, the piece I cut is probably sitting somewhere. But 
gosh. All right, so it's the Tricks and Treats stamp set. So you see we've got the Dracula and um, Frankenstein. And then the dies come with, well, a lot of them are out at the moment, but you've got the Frankenstein, the house, or sorry, the Dracula, the house. Um, you can create a candy corn, so you've got all three sections, the big section, the top, and the bottom. There's also these holes for the gift bag, which let me show you what that looks like. This is the biggest die in the set, and if you cut two of these, you can create this adorable gift bag. Now, I just pinched the sides, but it is a really cute size. Now, to maximize your paper for this, you can actually cut a piece to four and a half by five, and while I say that, let me double check my measurements. Yep, four and a half by five, and you'll have no excess. You just wanna make sure you line up that piece of paper that is within the cutting lines and you'll have no excess other than what it cuts out here and the little miter cuts that it does on the tab. So two of those, you'll piece them together, they'll glue together on the bottom. You've got this really cute little gift bag. So that's an added bonus. You can also do sort of this deckled edging on the gift bag as well. They give you that piece. There's a little tag. So this is a really, really cute bundle. Here again is our Frankenstein. There's a ghost die cut. This cuts out the word trick or treat. It kind of looks like an acorn, but it's more of a um, sentiment die cut with an interesting cutting edge there. And then you've got boo, which I think is adorable. So lots of great things. Give this a second look if you haven't already. Um, I know everybody's loving the bag of bones bundle so much so that it's out of stock, but this one, definitely take a look at tricks and treats. You can do lots of fun things with it. So let me clean up my mess here. I am gonna need the ghost. And the sentiment from for Happy Halloween came from the Bag of Bones stamp set. The stamp set is still available. It's the dies that are out of stock until um, next week, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move into our fun fold card. Let me clean up my mess here. And don't worry, if Halloween is not your thing, as I know it's not everybody's thing, this fun fold is really, really great for so many different occasions. So use your imagination um, to use different designer series papers and stamp sets and so many fun things to choose from in the new mini catalog. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got lots of pieces and parts today. So we're gonna start with the card base. This is basic gray and it measures four and a quarter by 11 scored in half at five and a half. So I've already done that ahead of time because I created the sample and I typically score first and then cut. So I always have two card bases. So I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish on the score line for the card base. Okay. Then for the back, I've got a piece of basic white that measures four by five and a quarter. This is where you can decide if you want to wait to adhere it, if you want to write your note first and then adhere it so you don't make any mistakes. I'm going to go ahead and stick that to the back. Well, I'm declaring this is the back, but you could have adhered this to any side. And then whichever one you adhered it to, that would be the back. Like so, okay? Then I've got... Three more pieces of designer series paper. These are in landscape if you've got a directional pattern. So they all measure four inches by five and a quarter inches. So our bats herringbone, that's gonna adhere to the front. like so. I'm just have an eighth of an inch border and you can have fun with layers here. I'm opting to just do designer series paper as my main layer just to kind of keep the thickness of this down because you will have quite a few layers on the inside um, sort of floating panels. And then our tombstone pattern, this designer series paper is so fun, um, is for the inside. So you can do some, pick some fun patterns for the inside.
There we go. All right, so we've got the big layers already adhered down. Okay, so we've got our designer series paper on the front and the two panels on the inside, our basic white on the back. Then I've got this strip that measures one and three quarters by 11. I wanna double check that. That this is the right size. No, that's two and a quarter. I'm gonna trim that. I um, cut a bunch ahead of time and picked the wrong one. All right, so one and three quarters by 11. And we're gonna do some simple scoring on this. So I'm gonna line up the 11 inch side here and I'm gonna make a score line at five and a half, right in the center. Then I'm gonna flip and the next two score lines will be at two and three quarters and eight and one quarter. Okay, so on one side we scored at five and a half, and then on the other side two and three quarters and eight and one quarter, and that means we have three equal lengths. These are all two and three quarter inch sections, but our score lines are on opposite sides of the cardstock because we're going to do a little zigzag fold there. All right, so we're going to take the valley score line and turn that into a mountain fold. That's the one in the center. And then I'm gonna take these two and fold them the opposite direction. I'll show you what it looks like from the side view. It's gonna look like a W or an M, all right? So the next thing we're gonna do is actually adhere this to the inside of our card. We're gonna to want to make sure that that center panel is pointing towards us, like so. Okay, but we're gonna put adhesive only on the two outside sections, but I'm gonna start with one side. So liquid glue, again, just remember, you want the center one to be a mountain fold. So on the back of this, I'm gonna do liquid glue. So I'm just gonna start with one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and layer that right up to the cardstock or the card edge, and I'm just centering it left to right before I press it down. Liquid glue is your friend here because it gives you a chance to kind of slide things into place, like so. The next thing I recommend is actually closing your little accordion here. Well, I feel like I'm playing an accordion right now. And then I'm gonna put adhesive here. Just, I'm kind of holding it with my thumbnail. And then I'll put adhesive like so, and then I'm just gonna close the card. Boom, like that. And it's gonna go right where I need it to go. I'm gonna give that a second to adhere, and then I can open it up and press into place. So then you've got it like so. It's so very cool. All right, so we've got quite a few panels here. We've got four panels of basic gray. These measure two and three quarters by two and one quarter, and you're gonna want four of those. My recommendation with this is that you cut a two and a quarter by 11 inch strip of cardstock, and then you'll cut it into four equal pieces. Two and three quarters times four is 11. Is that math thing again? <laughs> so um, your two and a quarter by 11 will give you exactly four pieces that measure two and three quarters by two and a quarter, okay? So go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and glue these guys down. Actually, let's glue them down after we do our panels here. So I've got three pieces of designer series paper. I love this bone pattern. And these measure two and a half by two. Again, because that's two inches, you can maximize your cuts with the 12 by 12 inch designer series paper. So go ahead and glue these down. I don't know, it's always easier for me to line up horizontally. I'm 
There we go. This almost gives me the, the vibe of, um, what's the metal plating? Is that what it's called? The, the way the pattern of the bones is? No, there's a name for that metal plating. I think you guys know what I'm thinking about. Diamond plate. Diamond plate. Thank you. My brain isn't whole without you. All right, so we got those three, and then same measurement, two and a half by two of basic white. I'm gonna stamp on this one with the sentiment, trick or treat. So let me grab that. If I can find it, there we go. Again, I just wiped that on my pants before I inked it up. Treat. Love the font on that. It reminds me of a Halloween set we used to have a couple years ago, but I love that font. So then this piece. I'll just glue down to this panel. I don't want to smear my black, so I'm just going to flip it over. I don't know why I keep, I'm like paranoid my glue is going to start pouring out, so I keep closing the cap. All right, so I do want the trick-or-treat panel to be right here in the center, or in the, kind of the center, center right. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm only going to put liquid adhesive kind of in that center section, because I don't want it obviously to be, to go past this uh, horizontal strip there, but I'm going to go ahead and... I'm centering it top to bottom, left to right. Again, kind of centering it between, not kind of, I am centering it between the score lines. But again, liquid glue is your friend here. Like that, okay? I just love the way this looks. So we're gonna go ahead and adhere the remaining panels. Again, sticking to the center, not going too far. And same thing, this time we're gonna center it between the score line and the edge. You can use a ruler if you want to. And as I mentioned, you could have fun with the characters in the set and have a different um, character on each panel, different sentiments. This would be really fun for a birthday card with a, with a bunch of different birthday sentiments or a beautiful designer series paper and showcase almost like little pictures. It looks like a picture wall to me. There we go. So it's just one of those things the recipient's gonna open the card and be like, wow. So it actually will stand. No, you can't really see that from that angle, but it'll stand to be able to put on display. Okay, so we're gonna decorate the front really easy here. I'm gonna use a couple of punches. So we're gonna use the decorative circle punch and then I'm gonna punch out a basic gray. Like so. And then kind of that diamond plate bone pattern. I'm gonna use the two inch circle punch which is available in our online exclusives. Just kind of center the diamond plate a little bit. I'm gonna layer these two together. Now with the decorative circle, I usually do the loops on the top or the, the smooth bumps on the top. So I'm just using that to kind of line up where that circle goes. And then we'll glue that on the card. And I got one more piece to die cut. I die cut the boo ahead of time. Pop that here. 
the wow factor of this card is really what's on the inside, so I didn't want the front to be too busy. All right. So I die cut the word boo from Cajun Craze, and it's got adhesive backing on it, the adhesive sheets. And then I'm gonna go ahead and die cut our little ghost here. Oh, geez. Uh, my stamp and cut and emboss machine had something to say tonight. All right, let's get our little ghost out. Let's pop his eyes out and his mouth. <laughs> There's our little happy ghost. I feel like Bob Ross. Happy trees. A little happy ghost. All right, liquid glue. Kind of put him off to the left a little bit. Take the adhesive backing off the word boo. Turns it into a sticker. Like that, and then as always, it needs a little bit of bling. I know I had my bling, here it is. I'll do a big one for that. Oh, take your pick tool, where'd you go? I know it's right in front of me and I'm not seeing, oh yeah, it is right in front of me. <laughs> Just put a little bit of bling there on the front. All right, so there we go. We have our pop-up fun fold, like so. Real wow factor, you're gonna have so much fun with those different panels. Let me bring in the other boxes here. I'm gonna bring in my inspiration as well so you can see that again. Again, this is Christine McNichol, Michelle Sturgeon. Love the paper she chose for hers. And she's done white here so you can write the little notes on the panels. And then here we have our little Kit Kat treat holder. Again, it is a kind of a fold and tuck gift box. Yes, it will fit a gift card, but it's a fun way to package up a Kit Kat, which is one of my favorite candy bars. So there we go. All right, let's go ahead and tee up your questions because I know you've got questions for me. So give me one second. All right. Where's my mouse? There you are. <laughs> Cynthia, I ordered my Stampin' Emboss machine on September 2nd, so when should I get it? Please let me know. So Cynthia, you'll be able to log into your demonstrator account, since Cynthia's on my team. Um, on your demonstrator account, you can look at your order history, and I'm assuming it has already shipped because uh, orders from September 2nd have already shipped, and you'll be able to see the tracking number. Stampin' Up! should have also sent you an email with the tracking number as well. That way you can track the shipment and know when to expect delivery. Let's see. Is there a way to rejuvenate vinyl cling stamps? Some of my well-loved sets feel dry and sort of sandy. Um, my only suggestion to try, Lisa, is just to try giving them a little bit of a dish soap and water bath and see if that doesn't bring back some of the stickiness and the shininess to them. Um, I don't know, you know, sometimes they can dry out depending on if you use maybe like a solvent um, ink on there or something, but give that a try. That's my best advice is just to try using dish soap and um, room temperature water. No, no extreme temperatures there and see if that doesn't do the trick. Do I know when the online Christmas set with the truck will be back? Let's see, I pulled up my inventory status report. Um, the truck, let's see. The week of October 16th for the trucking along um, bundle, okay. 
great question, Jennifer. What is the difference between a 3D embossing folder and a non-3D? They all seem to be dimensional to me. It really is just the depth of dimension. So the 3D embossing folders are gonna give you deeper, a little bit of a deeper texture, and that's sort of the mechanism of having a thicker embossing folder. So the plastic itself is thicker, which gives the embossing folder the ability to have deeper uh, patterns embossed into the cardstock. It's a subtle difference, but that is really the big difference between those two. And also, um, with the 3D embossing folders, if you spritz your cardstock with either water or even alcohol, uh, you'll get an even deeper impression with that. Any plan to bring Prize Patrol back? Not at this point, Jennifer, but it's not a no, not never. It's not a no, never. It's a, it's a maybe. Um, but I don't have any plans to bring that back at the moment. How do you cut paper in sixteenths when your cutter is done in eighths? Great question, Kathleen. My best advice for that, now our stamp and trimmer does have sixteenth of an inch measurements, um, but if your, stamp, if your trimmer uh, does not and it only has eighths, you can really just put the cardstock right between the measurement lines. That will be a sixteenth for you. So between the eighth measurements, just put that the edge of the cardstock right between the two and that will be a sixteenth for you. Do I know when the paper snips will be available? The week of September 11th, which is sometime next week. So keep your eye on the online store and see when those pop in. Did I skip one? I'm good, right? Yeah. I need a scoring tool to use with my Simply Scored. Is that ball tipped tool you use available separately? So not the um, scoring tool that comes with the Simply Scored, Debbie, however, uh, the if you have the take your pick tool believe it or not it has a so here's the take your pick tool um, you get a couple of different attachments so if you have this you have a scoring attachment so this is one of the attachments here you'll see it's got the ball tips and you can just fit that right into the end of the take your pick tool so that would be my recommendation is to get a take your pick tool if you don't have one already it's going to give you that putty end it's going to give you the double sided scoring so sort of that ball stylus, and then you also are gonna get the spatula end and the pokey tool end or the piercing end, okay? So my recommendation for that is the take your pick tool. Answer. Answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just pop it up really quick. I already, I already talked about Uncle Tom, but yes, we are on the same wavelength, aren't we, Gregors? Can we order but somehow hold shipping date until after September 21st? I will be out of state until then. Unfortunately not, Christy. Stampin' Up! doesn't give us the ability um, to request a hold on orders, so you'll kind of need to time your order by um, when you'll be back in town. Unless you have, I don't think you can have UPS hold mail, but I know with USPS you can. But yeah, I would just recommend that you order um, in time when you come back from your trip, that it'll be delivered then. So unfortunately, there's no way to hold orders that way. Inside panel pop-up card. Love that, Anne. Thank you so much. What are the dimensions of the bag you can make with the tricks and treats dies? Let me measure that for you. So Kate, it is. Oh, well, of course it's not exact. It's about three inches wide. four inches tall and one and one eighth inches in depth. So what did I say? Three by four by one and one eighth. Really cute size. Again, you're gonna to need to cut two of those pieces from the dies and glue them together to create the bag. Yes, Mary, so the project sheets with all the measurements for both of the projects I shared tonight, that, those will be linked in the description before the end of the day tomorrow. Um, so, so stop back for the video replay. You can get grab those links in the description. I do that to make sure that if I messed up on an, any measurements that I've got some time to um, just, when I do the practice run and then when I do the live stream, it gets me really um, focused on the project. So it's just easier for me to do the project sheets for you, by, for you by the next day. So by the end of the day tomorrow. Do you think that Stampin' Up! would ever open a warehouse somewhere in the Midwest to make shipping faster and maybe cheaper? I don't believe so, Nancy. It's a great suggestion. I will say I placed an order. So I'm on the eastern half of the United States. Typically, um, when uh, 
shipping is within um, service times, so meaning when they're shipping on time. Usually from the point that I order to the point that I get it in Georgia, it's about a week. However, I placed an order last Thursday and I got it on Tuesday. It was shipped via FedEx. I didn't expedite the order. Um, that was, I got really lucky. I've never gotten an order that quickly that's not expedited. Um, so I know that they are working on different options as far as um, shipping carriers, et cetera. I have noticed a lot of the orders kind of coming over to the Eastern half of the US. I'm seeing more FedEx sprinkled in there. Um, but I don't think that they have plans to have a warehouse on this half of the United States. It's a great suggestion, but again, there's always a big cost that would be involved with that. Uh, let's see. I purchased the Glow in the Dark 6x6 specialty paper this morning. Didn't want to miss out, but wanted to know if it's possible to stamp directly onto that specialty paper. So, Tracy, we did. I did try that on my sneak peek video, and... That I tried stays on and the stays on worked really well on the glow in the dark paper. I think when I used another ink, um, you do want to make sure it dries. I was having a little bit of smearing, I think with the water-based ink. I think I tried two different inks, but I'm not totally remembering. Um, but yeah, you can stamp on it. I think you can also emboss on it as well, like heat embossing. Um, but that would be really cool with sort of like a black ink. I would recommend the, the jet black stays on for that. Just make sure your ink is definitely dry before you um, touch the ink. I did see the new stamp and punch bundle and Sherry, thank you for um, asking that. Let me come on back to the online store because I want to share what Sherry is referring to. So share, which one is my screen share? There we go. Okay, so what she's referring to, is it hexagon? I'm going to actually go to, is it, I don't think it's in the online exclusive. It was a hexagon bundle. Give me one second. There it is. The heartfelt hexagon bundle. So this is actually a sneak peek bundle from the January to April 2024 mini catalog. Uh, this is a bundle that will be used for the World Card Making Day event that Stampin' Up! is hosting on October 7th. That event is open to anyone and everyone. So if you wanna partake in sort of a fun stamp along virtual event for World Card Making Day, that's October 7th. And this is one of the bundles that will be used in the projects and um, anyone can purchase it now. So it's called Heartfelt Hexagon and um, it's a really great bundle. I ordered this in the wee hours of the morning this morning because I love that punch and the stamp set that goes with it is awesome. So great question. All right. Where's my mouse? Here we go. I think I answered this, Mary, so yeah, I would use stays on. Will you be posting a video soon on die cut plates and how to alternate? I don't have any plans to do that, Laura. There are lots of videos out there sharing that technique, so I recommend doing a search on YouTube, but I will keep it in mind. Thank you. Oops, I clicked. Where did that one come from? I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> Uh, I'll go back to you, Gregors. What do you do with all your creations? How do you store if kept? So I do have kind of a growing stash of them at the moment. I do try to give them away to the UPS driver or my nail technician or my hairstylist. Um, I do just try to give those away as random acts of kindness. Sometimes the projects don't exactly fit the occasion and so they'll start to pile up a little bit. But I do often go back to them too to be inspired um, for future projects, maybe with a different size or similar style, that sort of thing. So I don't have any special storage for that. It's typically just like a bin, <laughs> like a dish bin. <laughs> so Greg's trying to knock me off my game. Uh, that was one of the phrases that Frankenstein would use. So Uncle Tom would sit up in my dad's closet where he could see out the window to the trick-or-treaters and he had um, a microphone connected to Frankenstein. And <laughs> Frankenstein would be able to march forward and march backwards as a robot, and he'd say Nestle Crunch with that reverberation echo sound effect. It was really hilarious, so <laughs> good stuff, Greg. Um, 
Yes, I do recommend Stampin' Miss for photopolymer stamps. I haven't had any issues with it, Nancy. I have heard that some have said that it's, um, I don't, I have not seen it do any damage to photopolymer stamp sets. So I use the Stampin' Mist on both photopolymer and red, red rubber with no issue. Bobby, it totally depends. So she said, your order was delivered FedEx. Mine always comes USPS. Why is that? It all depends. There's a number of different factors and I don't know the exact formula. Some of it's based on where you are, some of it's based on the weight of your order, and some of it is probably based on um, logistics of how many UPS orders are going out that day, how many USPS, FedEx, etc. So oftentimes with um, UPS SurePost, I don't know if this is always the case now, but it seems to be more often than not. It ships out UPS, but then USPS is the um, ultimate deliverer um, or delivery service. FedEx, sometimes FedEx gets handed over to USPS as well. So it really just depends. It depends on a number of different factors. And I wish I had sort of a crystal ball or the exact formula for when, when you know, how orders ship and why. So I wish I knew the answer for that. Where is the advent box located? Sandra, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Oh, it has the 25 envelopes inside a pretty box. That one has me stumped. I do not, um, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Sandra. If you've got some more information to share with me and I kind of help you figure out what you're looking for, shoot me an email at support at the paper pixie.com. All right. Oh, one more question snuck right in. So M, can't remember which type of stamp should you not use stays on with? I don't recommend that you use stays on with photopolymer. And the reason for that is the stays on cleaner is not photopolymer's friend. So the stays on cleaner will eat away at your photopolymer stamp set. Folks have had success using the stays on cleaner and cleaning it immediately. I personally don't even want to risk that. It's a solvent cleaner and it will eat away at the photopolymer. So um, stays on ink really doesn't come clean from a stamp set without the stays on cleaner because it is a photopolymer or a solvent ink. So um, I just typically steer clear of stays on for photopolymer unless you're okay with them getting pretty um, stained. So that's the case. Um, let's see. I haven't received my August paper pumpkin kit. Who do I contact? Shipping company or Stampin' Up? Start with Stampin' Up, Mary. Um, they will, there's sort of a time frame on when um, a certain time frame, if a certain amount of time has elapsed, that's when Stampin' Up will then send you a replacement order. And it has to do with um, when they're able to file a claim with um, Mail Innovations, the shipping provider for Paper Pumpkin. But start with Stampin' Up, 800 Stamp Up. Um, they're available right now. They're operating uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. They're in callback status at the moment. They will go back to normal operating on... I believe it's Monday, September 18th. But yeah, start with Stampin' Up. They'll do all the work for you as far as getting a replacement sent and then they can handle the claim with the delivery provider. So let's see. Cindy, let me look for your question. I did not see it. All right, hold on. Cindy, if you didn't put a Q, that's why it didn't make it to my Q. Let's see. Oh, I see. Am I close to my million dollar achievement? I am not. I'm, I just hit 700,000. So I'm inching my way closer, but getting close. I have not thought about my stamp set yet, but um, I will, I will start to think about it. Great question. So thank you so much. All right. Um, you guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's video, the projects, any tips or tricks I shared, please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, we'd appreciate that. I will be live again next Wednesday for episode 298 really inching closer to episode 300. We don't know what we're going to do yet for that episode. Stay tuned. Um, but we'll, we'll be live again next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time with two new projects for you. Again, it is catalog launch day. So many amazing products to choose from, including products not even in the catalog, in the online exclusives. 
So take a look at the online store. That is the best place to see product availability. A quick tip there, uh, you'll notice that bundles and suites are showing up as um, currently unavailable. Keep in mind that it's possible that only one or more in that suite, for example, is sold out. So the suite um, product number does get turned off when products are out of stock, but you can still order pieces and parts of that suite as well. So I do recommend you kind of take a look at all the different products in the suite, grab what you can if it's on your must have list and products will start to come back in stock. They're all kind of different back in stock dates, but you can reach out to your demonstrator uh, to find out more details about that. So thanks again for joining me. We'll be back next Wednesday, episode 298. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Project sheets will post to the video description before the end of the day tomorrow. And don't forget, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Have a wonderful and blessed week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.